uh, good morning to all of you i am very happy to the robotics and artificial intelligence federation of india to organize this event and given an opportunity to interact with the young minds so from that time i was a physics student and then later on a physics teacher and a researcher i have been the more and more i started learning about the universe i have been fascinated about two english words one is the tantalizing the universe the dynamics of it the space time curves in it the thermodynamics of that the instabilities associated with that then the uh, very complex nature of the whole thing defying most of the mathematics that we know is tantalizing then the other word is the word precious see the life that we have here our own life the life that we have on this planet are so precious when we just see what has been the environment endowed with the earth so close to sun and and save god a nuclear reactor and amidst the instabilities associated with the universe so we are gifted to have life here and we should be thankful to the nature for that so with this small introduction we will just go on to the universe some of the ideas with the time constraint of about 20 plus 10 20 minutes of speech and 10 minutes of interaction with you we will just go ahead and we will just see how things can be so the universe our earth is components two major components the magnetic field of earth and the atmosphere of earth the planets of the solar system our own central star the sun separated by it the interstellar space the stars then we have like this about 400 billion stars constituting our galaxy the milky way probably the today's children if i ask which is the most fascinating galaxy that they like they may say samsung galaxy s5 but now the milky way galaxy that we have is very wonderful it's a spiral galaxy we'll just see some more facts of them then we have the intergalactic space like this we have billions of galaxies so now one thing is sure that to live on this earth we should understand nature better and better there is no other go if you want to live comfortably yes we need to understand nature better and better that's only through science and technology so with the present day knowledge of what we have if we just see go through now this is the sun the third planet is the earth so now it is so close had this uh, yet been some 10% of the distance closer to earth the temperature would be around degree and life would not have been possible at the same time had it been 10% of the distance away from earth the night temperature will be around minus 40 degrees centigrade and again life might be very precarious so we have been in the right position and we have been talking about the radiation disposal methods and the waste product nuclear waste disposals in kalpakam or kodangalam or other plant other nuclear reactors where the annual consumption is less than a ton less than a ton of material but see the millions of tons are been in as nuclear waste are been thrown out by the sun as an unsafeguarded nuclear reactor and we are so close to the sun so these things should make us be more responsible citizens now it is true that ionizing radiations and a lot of radiations come from the sun in the form of solar wind luckily the earth's magnetic field saves us most of them get into the solar cap regions around some 30 degree space uh, near the south pole and also the north pole so the rest of the earth is habitable and safe is safe so the s magnetic field forms a very crucial and critical component in sustaining life on this planet we have this milky way galaxy where we have about 400 billion stars around and it is 
lakh and twenty thousand light years across. For the young minds, who are some of them are from the schools, the light year is a unit of distance. The distance is told by light in one year time, in vacuum. So it's around a little less than ten trillion kilometer. It's called as one light year. So with this in mind, if you just see some of the interesting facts coming over this. we would like to know we would like to address the question how this wonderful universe has come to existence so probably if you can just uh, think of then it's probably a very complicated thing but in science we say often the complicated problems have got simple solutions the only thing is we have to unknot it so that way we just see <coughs> one of the thing is that one of the clue is that If you just look at the night sky, we are having millions of stars around us. Beautiful night sky we have. So let us try to perform a thought experiment, then a real experiment. We have so many stars of them moving. How many of them are coming towards us? How many of them are going away from us? If you just try to find out, make a measurement. And if you really make a measurement, what we find is that all of them are going away from us only. Not even one of them is coming towards us. So now the question is that why all of them go away? Why all of them go away from us? Right? So you just that's a single point to be thought over because as such in the universe, our Earth doesn't have any. Universe. So they don't have any reason to go away from us. Away from us, there is no reason. And the fact is that they are all of them are going away. So if we just think of that, what is happening is that if we just try to have a balloon, half blown balloon, have a lot of dots on it, and then if you further blow, then each dot will be going away from every other dot. That means the balloon is expanding, so also is expanding. So we are in an expanding universe. so one small simple thought experiment as to of the stars how many of them are coming towards us and how many of them are going away from us gives us a clue that these star, the all the stars are going away means that the universe is expanding now if you think it in the reverse if they have been keeping on expanding go time reversal so at one point of time they should have been from a single point should have bursted out probably we can call it as a singularity At a small point, at a eleven size, where all the matter, the energy, mass, everything would have been concentrated, but anyhow, from a single point, it would have come out at some point of time. Then, will it be possible to find out this would have occurred? Yes, we will see. So now, if you just see, <coughs> the clues come from two simple observations: How does the stars move with respect to the Earth? And then there is a background, background microwave radiation, 24 sun coming from all directions. <coughs> This means that the universe is expanding, and then the microwave background radiation means that there was an initial burst. These things have been confirmed, and appropriate Nobel prizes have been given to those people who have been proposing those things. Now, so there was a big bang. from which the whole universe started and it's about 10 billion to 20 billion years ago to be precise it is about 13.5 billion years ago so probably this 13.5 billion years ago this number 13.5 you may remember put it in your corner of the mind where this magic number we will now come to that a little little later so now when we have this can we have a chance to look at this early universe so if uh, i want to see you as you looked yesterday no that's not possible we have come one day ahead so it's not possible to look at you who you look yesterday but now as we said the universe is tantalizing it is very fanciful it's very fascinating so now if you just see in this thing We have the Earth marked as one. Our nearest star is the Alpha Centauri, 
and the distance between them is 4 light year. So, the light starting from there takes 4 years to reach us. So, tonight if I go to the terrace, look at Alpha Century, the star. Yes, the star is there, if I look at it. Then, can I say that star is existing now? No, because the light which I am seeing from the star now has left the star 4 years ago. So, it only means that the star was there 4 years back. So, if I just take a photograph of that star now, I am taking the photograph of the star 4 years ago. Or reverse of it, imagine yourself, now you are locating yourself on the surface of Alpha Century, look at the air, then I can see you 4 years back how you look, played, football, things like that, I can look at you here. So, now this 4 years gives you an edge of seeing something go into the past and look at how things look. So, if that be the case, can I go still further, further away by having a better microscope, better telescope, better procedures, better algorithms and look at more distant stars, more distant galaxies, so that I can look at uh, the earlier and earlier part of the universe. So, in the attempt towards that, <coughs> see this is some of the facts, light takes about 4.37 light years <coughs> to reach from here, actually it is a binary system, does not matter about that. So, now when we want to look at the early universe and we want to know about the formation or the birth of the universe then now my target is to go deeper and deeper into the space and look at it. So, I have more powerful telescopes, I have more powerful telescopes not necessarily in the visual region, but also in the radio region. So, put all your mathematics at work, synthesize the signal, do the image processing, get as best an image as possible, that will give you as best a clue as possible. So, with this in mind, if we just proceed further, one of the earliest, one of the man's attempts to see further and further is the Hubble's telescope. <coughs> the problem is that if we have a land based, surface based telescope, then the distortions to the earth's atmosphere is very serious. That distorts so that the resolution is compromised. So, we are not able to get clear pictures. We should be going away from this. Yeah. So, that is why the Hubble telescope has been launched and it sends some beautiful pictures, extraordinarily good pictures it has been sending and you might have been probably looking from the news reports in the papers that excellent pictures have been coming, many computations have been made based on that. Thus, these are some of the wonderful pictures that have been sent by <coughs> the Hubble and especially the one, the red one that you are able to see, <coughs> that is a galaxy which is at a distance of 13 billion light years. I told you the earth might have, the whole universe might have been formed at around 13.5, 13.48 billion light years back, but now we are able to see up to 13 billion light years. That is about 95 percent of the targeted distance, now we are able to look at it. So, Probably, if you just go to some star system 100, 100 light year back, then probably if you from there if you look at the surface of earth, probably you can see your grandfather playing and if you go some 200 light years back, your forefathers some 3 generations back you can see playing on the surface of earth. Now, we are able to go back to 90, uh, 13 billion light years, that is 95 percent of the distance, that the targeted distance you are now able to go through the existing bubble telescope, the Hubble telescope. The only thing is the remaining distance, there are limitations of the Hubble coming over. So, now the NASA and Boeing are now trying to design a new telescopic system that they target to launch by 2030, that they feel they can go within few light years of the Big Bang, we will see. So,
So, <coughs> with this uh, 13.1 billion, we are we are able to go through, and uh, remaining about 0.38 billion light year, we are we want to target to look at. There's a effect of mankind. Now, the, all the technologies, all the science, all the mathematics, all the technology at the disposal of the mankind, we are able to push this frontier further and further. I feel the contribution and innovation of the young minds will be very great to contribute towards this. This is not a problem of India or America or anybody. It's a problem of mankind. The mankind wants to understand the universe better and better. So in that, all of us are belong a part of mankind. So we have a duty to contribute towards this. So, now, when the speed of light being very, very large, unless we break this another 0.48 billion kilo light year distance, we will not be having further conclusive proofs. We have theories. To corroborate with the theories, we want experiment. How the science and technology grows is that on one side we have theory, on the other side we have experiment. The Theories will be predicting something, the experiments will be verifying. Sometimes the experiments will be giving out some data, the theories will be developed to fit in that. So, the theory and the experiment go hand in hand. So, that is how the science and technology grows, especially that is how the modern science grows. By modern science, what I mean is the science after 1700. So, <coughs> by a very simple uh, trick the mankind was able to unknot a very difficult problem in science and technology. So, the birth of modern science from 1700 till today in this 300 years, the advancements we had is many, many four times greater than the advancements till 1700. The reason is that earlier, probably this I should share as a teacher to our young friends here. See, if there are several parameters coming over and influencing a phenomenon, before 1700, what they used to do is that change the pressure, change the temperature, change this, that, and then try to come to your own conclusion. That's how they have been trying to analyze science, science within quotes. But from 1700 onwards, what has been formulated is that if many parameters are influencing a phenomenon, keep all of them constant, vary only one of them. Find out its effect on another parameter. So, keep all other things constant. Find out how this one parameter affects the outcome. Then keep this parameter constant, change one more parameter, find what is the change in the outcome. So, at a time make only two of them change, that is one. Yeah. Thank you. So, <coughs> that way the modern science has grown and uh, oh, the moment this has been done, the whole thing has become very systematic and then the results were forthcoming and the development was very fast. So, some of the facts is that we have a very high solar wind, we are surviving, the whole sun is moving with an orbital velocity, all the galaxies in the or um, in the arms are just going around at terrific speed. There are instabilities. The thermodynamics is very complicated. In spite of it, we are living. We are living in a beautiful environment. So we should be thankful to nature. So now look at this. <coughs> it's very calm. The night sky looks very calm, but it's very dynamic. It looks very beautiful, but it's really very very violent. Remember. Some of the processes, the magnitudes in all are so large that it is extremely a violent universe that we are having. Very stable, we can't comment because many times we feel we do not understand the term very well. I feel I don't understand what stability means compared to the different processes that are going in the universe. So, extremely yeah, difficult things that are going over. Very much life supporting, very rare combination that made life is possible at earth. Then to the famous question, are we alone living 
and also living intelligent in this universe not necessary we should we be thinking like that that itself is an ego i will say so not necessarily so you guys <coughs> just ask this question what is the aim of life probably the young minds can come out with the different answers but scientifically speaking there can be only one right answer so and that is to live as long as possible and as comfortably as possible that is possible only through scientific understanding of things nothing else so the life is precious quality of life can be improved only by understanding nature better and better through science and technology because the physical laws alone whether we like it or not the physical laws alone are governing the physical world that is our wonderful universe so thank you i had a wonderful listening audience nice of you <coughs> so any question there is any oh please be seated see is there any limit of the universe see um what we have been talking by the term universe is the observable universe and uh, as i say the theory unless it is corroborated with the experiments we don't have a conclusive evidence on that so by limit with the term limit again doesn't have a concrete meaning in this context because by universe we say the observable universe we do not know what is beyond that because it doesn't have the time is not defined space is not defined beyond the singularity that is the big bang point you do not know at t equal to zero up to that we can have all our theories at t equal to zero and before that no we we don't want to make any guess we say we do not know yes when uh, when uh, a particular telescope or something takes takes an image how do you verify the light is coming from 13 billion light years away or how do you know the image is that far coming from that far away oh, oh. Uh, for that we have uh, excellent calibration procedures available excellent designs are available excellent theories are available so whenever we want to push in the knowledge of mankind we always bank upon the theory the solid mathematics behind it the designs behind it and the algorithms behind it so probably uh, within the inaccuracies of these things yes we thought the ultimate endeavor is to understand nature better and better yeah so i'm sham from savita university Uh, so my question is if we travel faster than light is time travel possible so um see um now as per the relativity general relativity the fastest thing is the speed of light in vacuum right so nothing can travel faster than light in vacuum this is a qualified statement but if some materials try to travel faster than light in a medium like glass we all know that sudden curve radiation will come out so that it decelerates the particle and hence the speed is reduced via below that of light so now the statement is that nothing can travel faster than light in vacuum that is as of now looks like a pillar of central pillar of science um so uh, i do not know anything about god because i have not studied about that yeah domain uh, but uh, to this the different theories of existence of the universe uh, we say from a big bang it all came from a singularity so from a single point it came then you can probably logically say that um, again uh, if all this universe again at one point start collapsing again a big bang again start collapsing so it may be an oscillating universe or vibrating universe maybe so and then we can say are we in the 437th vibration or no we can't say 
So anything the moment that t equal to 0 a big bang comes then all the knowledge vanishes because it is a singularity. Yes please. Yeah. Aliens. Yeah. Oh. Talk about you know the temperature we talk about. Yes I have told you uh, uh, when I asked the last question when I answered the last question uh, we need not be thinking that we are the only intelligent living being not necessarily because our sun is like any other star it is only our central star and 400 billion of them are there in our Milky Way galaxy and we have billions of such galaxies so not necessarily we we need not necessarily be the living being and the intelligent being not necessarily yes big no I do not catch you oh Higgs boson oh excellent um, it is really wonderful that your a young friend has asked about that only one because of the taking into time into consideration just a very quick one half a sentence I will just offer on this. <coughs> See the Higgs, Higgs boson we say somebody quote it as God particle and all why should they be called as God particle because from the biblical origin we say uh, God said let there be earth there was earth that means they say by saying that creation of the universe creation of mass that is what they mean. So now the point is that I am having say 63 kg mass you are having some 72 kg mass what that mass comes from. So we know about the origin of the charge spin this the momentum energy those things but mass how it comes from. So in 1965 professor Higg told that there is a particle and that is responsible to give mass the property mass to every other particle. So and it was a theory that was suggested in 1965 now the large hadron collider has we have reasonable evidence beyond 6 sigma level to confirm that and now we feel we have discovered the Higgs boson and that is why the Nobel prize last year was given to professor Higgs. Good nice question. Oh, uh, by uh, we have suitable signals there will be sensors on board there will be recording the image and suitably by radio waves that will be transmitted here we will receive those signals we will reconstruct that image here we have the technology for that ok. Yeah. So I am Sri Harish from Savita University is uh, shifting of poles possible in future to it? <coughs> uh, there are many theories for that and many dynamics are going on whether shifting of poles is possible or not does not matter but the there is a necessity for the magnetic lines of earth if the magnetic field of earth is not there then we would have been 24 7 bombarded by the uh, radiative particles from the sun and also from the cosmos as a result we would have all would have been died many more times many times by now. So the magnetic field of earth is very crucial to sustain life here. So thank you all very much, we had an excellent morning, thank you, good day.